Welcome to my tutorial for the use of the, the tools in Silverstripe CMS for creating and editing tables. I'd like to say at this point that I highly recommend that you use the Firefox browser whenever you are using the Silverstripe CMS as you will get the best results. This isn't to say it won't work in other browsers, but sometimes the results will be unexpected. It works best in Firefox. First of all, I will put a heading here above where I'm going to put my table, and I'm going to set that as a heading level 2. Now to insert my table, I click the Insert Table button here, and I am presented with a pop-up with some options for my new table. I'm going to make my table four columns by four rows, a cell padding of 6 and a cell spacing of 0. Border is already set to 0, but you'll be able to see the edges of the cells once it's inserted into this area of the editor. I'm going to set it at a, as a width of 100% and click Insert. So there's my table. Once I have my table created, I can begin filling in the content and since I have already made this table and I have it in my clipboard, I'm just going to quickly replace it so that we can get on with the next bit. So here's my table and the contents are all typed in there. But as you can see, there isn't any difference between the column headers and the regular data in the table. Now it's best when creating tables to think about what's, what data is in the table and what's the best way to present it. If you have some cells that really are headers to the columns or the rows, you don't want to just select the text and make it bold because that doesn't give that information any additional meaning. You want to actually identify this cell as a header cell instead of a plain cell with some bold text in it. So the way that you do that is you put your cursor in that cell that you want to make into a header cell and you click the table cell properties button. When that pops up you change the cell type from data to header and you identify the scope as the column. So this this cell that we're editing here, fruit, is a header for that column. Now I also know that my other top, top row items are also the headers for those columns, so I can tell this to update all the cells in the row with the same information right now. So I choose that from the drop down and I hit update. So now all of these have become header cells instead of regular data cells. But I also can see that these three items here are actually headers for these rows. So I'm going to change them to headers as well. I have to do each of these one at a time because it doesn't have a global set this for all the cells in the column option like we saw for changing all the cells in the row. So I'm just going to say that's a header and the scope is the row and hit update and the same with the other two. So that's pretty easy. And this makes sure that the table is marked up properly in the HTML code that's behind what you see when you're viewing the web page in your browser. And this enables the table to make more sense to search engines that are indexing your page and to people who are listening to the page being read to them by a screen reader. They can understand the content of the table because the headers are clearly identified. I'm going to save my progress here. Now if I wanted to add another row to this table, I would decide where I wanted it to be and let's say I want it to go above the last row. So I can put my cursor into the last row and then click the insert row before button and I 
see that I have a new row here. Now, if I'm on the last row in the table and I want another one down below, I would put my cursor in the last row and I could click the insert row after. And I could add another couple of items to my table here. And you'll see that these didn't automatically become headers, but it's easy to just go ahead and make them into headers as well. Okay, so here's my table. And let's say I decided that I wanted to remove one of these rows. You put your cursor into the row that you want to remove and you find the the little icon here with the up and down arrows and the little red X in the middle. That will delete the row. If you click this one, it'll delete the column. And so this in this way you can edit the rows and columns of your table and just in the same way that we used the insert row before and the insert row after, we can also insert columns into our table in the same way. We can also use the delete row and delete column buttons to remove those um, if we don't want to use these little buttons here. Another thing that we can do is if we decided that we needed to merge two of the cells, we can select them like this by clicking and dragging, and then we can click the Merge Table Cells button. And you can see that it combined the contents of both of those cells to be, and now that is combined. And if we decided that we wanted this information to sit at the top of the cell. We just click our table cell properties button and our vertical alignment we can set that to the top and we can also set the horizontal alignment to center and it changes the way that the data is aligned within the cell. If we wanted to take this table and duplicate it and including the header above it, the best way to do that is within the HTML pop-up and uh, I know that can be somewhat intimidating but it's easier than trying to get the cursor to come down below the bottom of the table. As you can see anywhere that I click down here it wants to put the cursor at the end of the last cell in the table, which isn't very helpful when you want to put more content down below the table. So the way you get around that is you click the HTML source button and you look at the code. And once you understand what the code is doing, it's not very scary. This here is our heading level two. You can tell that it's at level 2 because it says H2 and inside of it is the about fruit text and then this is where the table begins and down here is where the table ends so that's the that's our whole table right there and that's what that's what the markup looks like you can see we have our table headers and our table data cells just like that and, and it's just saying this is where this cell begins this is the stuff that's inside it and here's where it ends and within this table, each row has its number of headers or cells. So if we wanted to duplicate this whole table so that we could fill it up with different information, we would select all of this text, all these lines of code, 
and copy them. You can do that with a right click and then hit return and paste and click insert and now we have two whole sets of the same table and two headers. So we can begin editing our content like this. So this is useful if you've gone to a deal of trouble to format a specific table but you need to have it contain different information for another topic or something like that. Now if you wanted to put just a plain paragraph below this table, you still find that it's difficult to do that because you can't get your cursor down below. So we go back to our HTML pop-up again. We find the very last line in the code. We put a return there. And we type a paragraph tag. And we might put a little bit of our content there and then we end our paragraph tag. And you can tell the beginning is just the P inside the little carrots and then the end has a slash in front of the P and otherwise it's the same. So if we hit insert then we see our text down here and we can keep typing our content. The same would work if you had the table on the page by itself and you wanted to put something above it the way that we had put this header above here. Another way to deal with a table would be to put all your content in first and then put a return and then insert your new table between your header and your paragraph. That would help you avoid having to go into the HTML to get some things above and below your first or last table if it's the first or last thing on the page. So I think that is about all there is to editing tables. If you wanted to split these cells back apart, you put your cursor in there and then you can see that there's the split merge table cells button and so then we could type the correct content in those cells. And I'm going to set the alignment back to not set on these so that the browser will just do the default alignment on those cells.